Well, what's up guys? Zoe here from OneGlassTrader.com and welcome to part two of my mini series of everything to do with Confluence Trading. Now, if you missed part one, I strongly suggest that you click the link in the top right hand corner or the link below because we went through defining what Confluence Trading is. We went through my cheat sheet, so the top trading techniques and analysis that I personally go through before I pull the trigger on any, any single trade. And then we took all those techniques and walked through a step-by-step -step example of an all-rounded Confluence Trade. Now, in this part, we're going to be taking that one step further by combining confluence with, with risk management for you to become more profitable. And what I mean by that, imagine that if you trade today with a reward to risk ratio of one to one, that means for you to be profitable, you need to be hitting a strike rate of above 50%. What if I told you that you could still be profitable with the reward to risk of one to one um, and you only had a strike rate of 44% of a win rate. Now, you might not think that's possible, but let me assure you it is, and I'm gonna tell you how to do that in this video. So let's get to it. The first thing we're gonna look at is understanding the concept that not all trade setups are equal, and all trade setups have a different expected probability of winning. So a good example of this is the classic moving average crossover. We all know that moving average crossover strategies worked well in trending markets, but they don't work very well in ranging markets. So even though the signal in both scenarios are exactly the same, the probability of that trade be getting into take profit is lower in ranging markets and higher in trending markets. And that's what I mean by the expected probability is different for every trade setup or signal that you get. So if we know that, then it would be foolish to risk the same amount for every single setup uh, that that the our trading strategy provides us. And we've all heard the saying that never risk any more than 2% of your account. And when people hear that, they kind of miss the, the, the wording of don't risk any more than 2%. They take it as risk 2% and that's it. No one ever talks about, you know, risking 1%, 0.5%. And this is what this uh, trader on a podcast around a year ago was talking about. And I didn't really implement it till around four or five months ago. And it got me thinking about, you know, confluence and how we should be trading or risking rather different amounts of risk depending on the confluence, the number of confluence indicators that they uh, that there are. So, what I've done is I've kind of developed a kind of a a grading or ranking system on if if something has you know three or more confluence factors, I will risk more on a trade than if something only has zero to one confluence factor. So, I'm not saying that I don't take the trade if it only has one. If, for example, the MACD crossover, for example, if it just had a MACD crossover and any, nothing else wasn't there, I will still take the trade, but I'll put a lower risk size on it. So let me kind of explain what that what that kind of looks like visually. Um, and I've kind of grade this into kind of a, as if you're taking a test uh, at school in uh, a, 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 B, C. Um, so we'll start with grade C. So uh, which I'm defining as the lowest quality of a... Um, um of, of a kind of trade setup so similar going you looking back at the example we talked about in the previous part uh, of this series is you've got regular divergence um, and you've also got the rsi overbought on multiple time frames um, that that to me is a really really good setup and this is the setup that is the core fundamental setup of my forex scalping course which you guys can watch on youtube i'll link to that in the description or on the top right hand corner um but if you just had those two elements alone um you know in this example you would only risk half a percent of your trading account uh, to to this particular trade setup and this will be the baseline of grade B and grade A so grade B you've got those two elements again um, and then you've also got price rejecting uh, a significant level so again if you remember in part one we had a uh, regular divergence 
we had the RSI overbought and it was at the 1.0 uh, uh, 1 um, uh, significant level line. So again, you've got three factors happening there. So therefore, you know, I'm a bit more confident that this trade may may actually reverse. So I'll put 1% on, uh, on, on a grade B trade uh, as an example. Then a premium trade or a grade A trade is where you've got everything in grade B and grade C. So you've got regular divergence, you've got RSI overbought, you've got significant levels. You've also got a candlestick pattern, which is bearish or bullish, depending on what, what it is that you're actually trading. Um, and you're also you know, trading in line with the higher time frame, which is 2x time frames of your trading chart. So everything that we talked about in the previous video in this particular example will be classified as a grade A trade and therefore our risk 2% of the account. So I'm not, again, like I say, I'm not saying that you have to only trade grade A and you don't trade grade B and grade C. What I, because if you do that, you're not going to get that many setups. What I am saying is, is that you should still take grade B and still take grade C, but trade just that little bit lower. So therefore, because the probability is less likely that these ones will convert into winning trades. And that's not to say grade A is going to be 100% winners. You're still going to get losses on there, but you're going to get more right than you get wrong. Um, and then, you know, when you average it all out, you will become more profitable inside the long term. And this is exactly what I'm going to show you now is how you can use this risk management tool or a strategy to become a more profitable trader and probably more importantly is to preserve your capital and we'll go through a few examples right now. So let's just take a fictitious example that um, we, we get a 100% win rate and our reward to risk is one to one. And Let's just say that our starting balance is £1,000 and we risk 2% on every trade. And in this example, we're going to say that we took nine trades um, and we took them in order of grade A, grade B and grade C as the first three, four, five and six, A, B, C and seven, eight, nine, A, B, C. So you take three grade A's, three grade B's and three grade C's, uh, one after the other in this fictitious example. Um, and in the second in the second example, we've got the same thing, but instead of risking 2% per trade, we risk 2% for grade A, 1% for grade B, and 0.5% for grade C. Um, so in, in the first example, um, as you can see there, we took nine trades, A, B, C, A, B, C, A, B, C. We won all the trades and we made 2% cumulative every time every time we want to trade and therefore after nine trades will be 19.5 percent up uh, in, uh, in in profit which is absolutely fantastic and similarly inside uh, the second example we also uh, were were up by but only 11 percent um, because we the accumulative average is that we gained less than 2% uh, on every trade because we were risking lower amounts for grade B and grade C trades. So you may be thinking, actually, hold on a second. Uh, why would I even bother with that? Because you make more money inside um, uh, risking 2% on every trade, which on fact lo looks correct. But how often do you win 100% of the time? Not, not very often. So this is the only example where and i'll show you in a second where trading two percent per trade actually actually makes you kind of better off so the higher the win ratio the better off the two percent version happens but when we trade we all know that it's around 50 to 60 to between 40 and 60 percent kind of our win rate is depending on what your take profit target is and your stop loss um it's kind of there so we'll go through those kind of examples but i wanted to show you all extremes um to kind of get you in the mindset of understanding where, where, where i'm taking this so if we take the same example but let's now flip it the other way that we lost all nine trades so in the first example, losing all nine trades makes us lose 16.6%, which is fine. Again, risking 2% on every trade. Um, and in this example, because we're risking less than 2% every trade, we actually also make up with the loss because we didn't make, win any trades. But you can see that our ROI is less 
than the uh, risking 2% of trade. So when I talk about preservation of capital, because that's the aim of the game, the aim of the game here is to save save your money so then you can at least trade for another day. Um, and again, risking 2% of a trade is again a very sound methodology risk management strategy, but you can see here that doing it this way by you know your probability of setups and taking risk depending on the probability helps you define and um, helps you define and l mitigate your risk even further which is the most important thing i want you to take away from this video and now let's assume for a second that we get a 44.4 percent win rate at one-to-one -one reward to risk now this means that you win four out of your nine trades. So on a traditional flat risk management strategy, as, as you would imagine, because you've got a strike rate of less than 50%, you make a minus 2.2% minus ROI, which, you know, you're pretty much flat. You know, it's still a very sound methodology trading strategy to have. But let's just say, for example, now that you flip it and you do the kind of phased grading approach um, and you actually make a positive 0.4%. And that's because in this example, you know, you had two grade A trades in there where you actually won the 2%. But the four losses that you made uh, protected your profits because you're risking less i.e. 1 and 0.5% for those other other trades. So as you can see, it is possible to be a profitable trader with a reward to risk of one to one with a less than 50 percent strike rate and that's that's the key thing of this whole video that i want you guys to take away with and you know putting it all together like i said the goal of trading is to make money first and foremost but you have to preserve your capital in the process i'm sure you guys have heard the concept of risk of ruin um, i'll probably do a video about it uh, at, at some point but it's basically gives you a number of of how of how reliable your trading strategy is in terms of from a risk management perspective like when when is when is when are you expected to kind of blow your account and you know a low risk of ruin basically means that you'll have enough money to keep trading and therefore you know potentially to become a profitable trader and that's where that's my goal in terms of helping you guys of doing that and so i'm sharing this kind of technique with you and i really strongly recommend you guys implement it in your trading strategy so you know risk more but again have that cap i personally i wouldn't go any more than two percent so your highest risk that you ever place on a trade is two percent so whatever you define as your quote unquote grade a your premium trade setups with four or five different confluence factors that's your max risk two percent for that particular trade again when you get a combination of confluence uh, factors and we've all heard the saying that you know you can take a losing strategy into a winning strategy by applying good risk management i feel that this is what they're talking about here when you talk about or hear the kind of pro traders talking about risk management risk management risk management it's by using these type of techniques of understanding what are the high probability premium trades as i talk about in my forex scalping course as an example about risking more for those and then other trades which are still in their mind good quality signals but this there's something that's not right there that potentially could go against them so therefore they risk less for that trade so i really hope that you know you found the whole confluence course really useful and you know you guys should start seeing thumbnails now of my forex scalping course which i mentioned a few times in this video i strongly recommend that you guys watch that and apply these kind of confluence techniques to that forex scalping course which i'm sure you guys will find useful i'll also put in the uh, OGT price action indicator as well uh, playlist because that is you know for me one of the one of the key core elements of my personal training strategy around price action so check out those two videos and I shall see you guys shortly